You've got uh, posted online quotes from Yoda, Tyler Durden, and Danny Elfman, but none from your fourth grade school choir teacher, Mrs. Norton. That's interesting. Where'd you, where'd you find out about Miss Norton? I have my sources. <laughs> Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me and this guy. My guest today goes by many names, but for the purposes of today's interview, we use the one from my recent review of his debut song, Nobody Jones, featuring D. Kenny on drums. Dabbling in multiple sounds for in multiple bands, he balanced his family life with being a musician in a new town while making new music. Please welcome to the show, Juicebox Desmond. Hey, Juicebox. Hey. Thanks for having me. No, no problem. And I appreciate you. Official toast. I've finished my milk. Ah, uh, slacker. Anyway, <laughs> so right off the bat, I know that we're a little pressed for time today. So in the interest of time, a phrase I hate in interviews, but it is what it is. <clears throat> Real quick. Number one, what's with the name? Where did Juice Box Desmond come from? That's a good question. Um, so I've, my, uh, I'll start with Desmond. Desmond is my is my dad's name. Oh, and I have a, you know, I have a interesting situation where I have a biological father, but I have a dad and my biological father is whose name that I carry in real life, you know, at my job and my family and all that. Um, but I needed to give a, uh, I felt like I needed to give a, a shout out to my, my dad who raised me. Uh, my dad, shout out to Sean Desmond. Uh, that's my dad. And so I carry his name at, uh, for my musical ventures and my creative public stuff. Um, I like to use Desmond. And, and I've always been, I've always tried to do that with One Ton Project and all that. Uh, you know, you'll notice that I'm credited as Brandon Desmond on a lot of that stuff. Um, as far as Juicebox goes, you know, <laughs> I've been using the, uh, a similar screen name or a handle on the internet for almost 20 years. Um, I've been Juicebox online for a long time. And so recently when I decided to, to start doing some solo music and start making, making records by myself, um, I, I, I thought maybe I'll use Juicebox be, since that's a, a name that I've used for a long time and Desmond since that's a name that I've used for a long time and I threw them together. There's something about my real name that doesn't sound like a good, a good solo artist name, you know? Yeah, I, I know the feeling. Um, it took me a long time to come to grips with Joshua Courtright. And I had more than one musician friend be like, dude, just use your name. It's a perfectly fine name. And I'm like, no, no, I need, I need that stage name. I need that, <laughs> that name that rolls off the lips. And eventually, you know, I, I started using my own. And then Room 6 came along. And most of what I put out now is, is you know, on Room 6. But uh, I am, <sighs> the bug is still back there to, like, work on new music, start putting more stuff out for Joshua. And um, also, you know, when you're, when you're in a band, your focus is, let's get the band name out there. Let's grow the brand. Right. And so now I've got it. I had to. I had to pivot, and I started doing my own brand, of my own name, and then YouTube came along, and I was like, oh, "I could do that." And Room Six became a thing, and uh, I, I. You see all those guitars on the wall behind me, <laughs> yep. And 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 there's other gear. I I I am trying my best. I'm trying my best to position myself by Monday of each week. To have a new music Monday where I, I work on music. It's either new to me and it's like cover songs or I'm working on some new music. Um, I've been collaborating with someone off and on and uh, just trying to keep the juices flowing. Keep feeling like less of a poser when I, <laughs> when I, when I do reviews, you know. <laughs> um, well, yeah. And so it's, Set yourself it's, some goals, you know. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Um, and so the next thing is uh, I, I'm on the fence right now whether I should... I'm also on TikTok. I'm going to be doing Twitch streams soon in Discord. And uh, you heard it here first. Hey, uh, I, I'm i on the fence between do I put out my older stuff again, which, I mean, at this point, it's over a decade old. Seriously, some of it's over two, de two decades old. Do I put that out there to the new audience I seem to be getting, or do I just move on, create all new stuff? Well, yeah. is your decade old stuff out yet? From oh yeah, I got two albums ago? out. Yeah, there's a link down in the description. Two albums uh, I've had out forever. 
And I just, you know, one thing and another, I never really gave it a go for that. Uh, and so I'm, I'm trying, that's why, like, when I start thinking about new music, I'm like, well, who's going to write it? Is it going to be Joshua Courtright or is it going to be, you know, Room 6? Uh, and I think, just t- saying it right now, I think, uh, you heard it here first. Hey, uh, I think I'm going to be focusing on new stuff. And if that gets any traction, I'll start peppering in the older stuff and be like, hey, by the way, I got two other albums. So, But we're here to talk about you, sir. And hey. so we're here to talk about you and D. Kenny. How did that whole thing come around? Because I know you two are also in Car- uh, Chaos Carousel. Uh, Chaos Carousel is the name of our new song. Uh, me and wait, what? Yeah, me and D. Kenny are are a band called the Bejesus. I'm sorry. Yes, you're right. My notes. I, if I'd read all my notes, <laughs> uh, yes, the Bejesus, and then Chaos, Chaos Carousel is the song. Well, I, here I'll, I'll just give you a little history on that if you, if you want. Um, Please, D. Kenny. His name's Dan, and I, him, and I started the band that eventually became One Ton Project. We started that band. Uh, together back in 1997 in high school, at Eldorado oh, wait. High School. So is this the Dan that we both know? Nope, this is Dan. Oh, different Dan. No, okay. different Dan. That's why I was like, where'd the Kenny come from? <laughs> All right, and and so we, yeah, we started the band, and that was our original name. It was the Bejesus, and we we went through some iterations. Had some other people playing with us. We turned into, you know, we we were called Eth, E T H for uh, for quite a while, for about three years. Um, eventually we met Travis Mercer, um, yep. the vocalist for Once On Project, and that's when we turned it into Once On Project. Um, and a few years, or a couple of years, I'll say after that, uh, uh, Dan, Dan had a situation and had to, had to move away. He, and he moved up to Olympia, Washington. Um, and you know, Once On Project went on, we, we, that's when we got, uh, Joe Munoz and, um, we solidified with with Sage, and uh, you know we did what we did with One Ton Project, and we're still going. Yeah. Um, but you know, at about in about 2014, yeah. you know, I always maintain contact with Dan. Of course, he's my you know like my first musical partner. Um, we we always talked, and we've got a lot of musical overlap. We we both love progressive rock music, and and you know the Beatles and cool old stuff like that, kind of specific stuff. And, uh, him and him and I decided to, to go ahead and start another project now that we can send tracks online back and forth to record it. Um, why not? Right. Um, I always was inspired to write with him and I'm, I'm a, I'm a fan of his songs. Um, you know, he's, he's put out a solo album himself uh, under the name Dan Buchanan. And it's kind of a rare thing to find if you can find it, but it's out there. And it's called Take Your Place, and I want to plug that for him. It's a, it's a really, really good singer-songwriter record with some some rock and some progressive rock uh, influences going on. Um, but him and I decided to do something again. We we decided to go ahead and call it The Bejesus, which is what we originally called it in high school. Um, and since 2014, we've been writing uh, and recording n- new material. Uh, it's taken the, us this long to get that first song completed and out. Um, we had some equipment issues and things like that. Um, As you do. We don't want to put out garbage. And so, you know, we we made sure that we had what we needed to to make it what we want. And so finally, we got our first song out from the Bejesus Chaos Carousel. And we made a, uh, a lyric video. Yes, and it's actually really amazing. Um, I'll throw a link down in the description for that one as well. Uh so, Bejesus came first, and then Juicebox Desmond. Well, Juicebox is brand new, man. That's uh, that's like uh, I started to do that in August of 2021. Yes, and uh, there's definitely some one-ton project influence in that uh, in the uh, Nobody Jones. I mean, it's it's just inescapable. You spend that much time doing that kind of music. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know, you're probably hearing both here. That you know, I'm I I. Uh, I'm a, a big part of the writing in One Ton Project. And so you'll hear some of that in my solo music naturally, just because it's me. It sounds like me. Right. And honestly, um, I was going to ask that because it definitely seemed like, I was like, okay, 
did the band influence you, or were was that you influencing the band? That's totally it both, like for sure. The latter, yeah. yeah. To- well, totally. I'm not going to sit here and say that I am Once on Project because that's the, it's <laughs> far, makes- far from the truth. And I think anybody who's heard it and saw, seen us play knows that. Um, right, but well, that's that's the singer's yeah. job. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, no, you know, Once on Project is a is a sound in itself, and our, uh, you know, Travis is is really that sound, I think. You know, you, the guitars yes. and stuff rounded out, and you can hear our you know, our individual styles, but One Ton Project, when I think of One Ton Project, it's really Travis. Yeah, but we're here to talk about you, Juice Box, so well, I'm let's here, move on. I, I would love to talk about it all, you know what I mean? I, I right. All my, you know, One Ton Project, I'm really proud of everything that we've done in that band, and that's been my main, my main musical outlet for, you know, for almost 20 years. So, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to step on it and push it aside. It really is important to me and we're still making recordings and getting them out there. Even at the same time as I'm doing Juicebox Desmond, my solo stuff and the bejesus, you know, it's all, it's all kind of starting to, to, uh, to flow. Lots of stuff, lots of new stuff is flowing from all of it. Right on. Yeah. Okay. Excited. Um, And you should be proud of it. Um, moving on. Does Sesquipedalian apply to you or your music? That's me. Uh, it uh, that's got a specific definition, but uh, it's funny you brought that up. But it, to me, it just means that I'm a word nerd. You know, I like I like yep. interesting words, maybe uh, esoteric words that you don't hear all the time. I saw that and I was like, I feel like I should know this word. And I looked it up and I was like, Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's about right. Applies to me too, pretty that's much. That's me, language but, nerd. Um, for <laughs> for those of you at home who don't know what a sesquipedalian is. Bing. <laughs> All right. Um, Word nerd. So, so speaking of voids, of voids, uh, you, you you've got uh, posted online quotes from Yoda, Tyler Jordan, and Danny Elfman, but none from your fourth grade school choir teacher, Mrs. Norton. That's interesting. Where'd you Where'd you find out about Miss Norton? I have my sources. <laughs> you You're reminding me of the guy from Hot Ones. Doing thank, the deep, thank you. Deep dig. That is the highest praise. Sean Evans and his hot, his team and his the deep dives. I, I I aim for that. That is my that is what I aspire to. I love the moment of just like he's he, he's a damn good interview. That? And if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna follow anybody's lead doing interviews, that's the guy. Yeah, and, and the thing is, just watching him without the guest is weird, <laughs> but it works with the guest, which I assume right. would be the same for anybody watching just me. Wish but, I had yeah. some hot wings right now to make this a little more interesting. <laughs> Well, I got, I got whiskey. Sorry, I don't have any hot wings. Um, Need more milk. Yeah, you're at home. You could, you, you could have made wings. Um, but your fourth grade school twi- choir teacher, you credit it with, um, basically getting you st- like really interested in. You know, I can make yeah. music. She kind of got me started. Um, yeah. I think, um, you know, not nothing, not to take away from Miss Mor- Norton. Shout out to Miss Norton if you're out there. <laughs> if um, she's still alive. <laughs> right. I'm sure she is. She's out there teaching music probably somewhere. But I had a sixth grade orchestra teacher, Mr. Schulteis, who still teaches ah. in the school district at, in Clark County School District, as far as I know. Um, and he, he was another he was another uh, sort of driving influence when I was young uh, to, to start being musical. Right on. Uh, so what was different in the writing process between Nobody Jones and the new track Knuckles to Maple? Oh, that's a good one. Um the, That's why I asked the, it. The, the, <laughs> the writing process. Um, the because they're different sounds. They're definitely different they songs. Yeah, it's a little bit different vibe, right? Um, the nobody Jones kind of a, is one of the songs that it it, um, it came out really fast. Uh, it's when I wrote the riff, the guitar riff, the fir- very right. first guitar riff, um, it just sort of inspired everything that came out of it, including you know the the basic drum groove and things like that. Um, and, and that one was kind of like little building blocks, but in a really short time, short period of time, I want to say three days, it took me to get a, the, the full idea together for that. Um, Knuckles to Maple was based on a riff that I had been playing here and there, you know, in like one ton project rehearsals and, um, things like that. And I just never could get anything going with it. And sort of like the other guys were, um, I think it's kind of a, basic sounding riff it never really got any of the otp guys' attention like i was hoping it would um so it was just well, a, they're not basic yeah well it, you know I, I don't it's it's kind of basic it's you know it's 
it's two chords, man. It's, it's A and E. Um, and, uh, so I sat on that riff for years, probably five years before I decided I was going to do something with it. And I actually wrote Knuckles to Maple before I wrote, uh, Nobody Jones, but have been sitting on Knuckles because it hasn't been finished. Uh, Nobody Jones was finished first. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, so, and, and right now the only thing posted for Knuckles to Maples is, or Knuckles to Maple is, uh, the demo, right? I, th- I think I've taken it down. Yeah. I've, I've oh, made, okay. I've made it private. I gave you a sneak peek of it, but it's still got some, I'm still working on a little bit of the mix. Um, right. and I'm still working on the video for that one. So, right. We're, I want to talk tweaks. about the video. Uh, did you do the video for hunger for one ton project? The, uh, hunger. Oh, the lyric video for hunger. Yeah. Yeah. I edited the video. Yes, I did. Cause um, it, oh, but the ideas are, I, I love that you love it. I, I appreciate that you, that you like it. Um, the ideas came from all of the band. Like, you know, this, we kind of conceptualized it together. Right. Um, and then I, I tried to do my best to put it together and make it a reality in the video editor. I, I especially love the flatline part. That was Thanks. chef's kiss. Cause I was just like, Ooh, it gave me chills. You know, it's the first like, time I've ever seriously. actually made an animation myself is that, that flatline in that. Right on. Yeah. Um, it, proud, it, of that. It ins- <laughs> proud of that it simple animation. <laughs> <laughs> it inspired me. I'm thinking of doing, of making some lyric videos to cool. get my stuff out there because who wants to see me, you know, <laughs> Well, I want right. to see you. Uh, I, you Aww. know, if you do it right, you do it right. You can you can be in the video, even if you're ugly like me. Oh hush. Uh, well, you know, Meatloaf did it. R.I.P. Uh, moving on. These are a little bit more standard interview questions now. A little less. Uh, Hit me with it. A little ge- less generic. Time to get chatty Kathy with you. I like so, it. How long have you been playing music, just in general? In general, I started when I was 16. I picked up my first guitar when I was. 16 i had a went to uh I, I got my first job at albertson's hey, hey pushing carts and bagging groceries and i took my very first paycheck i think it was like 150 bucks and i bought a cheap like japanese ex, uh, japanese made explorer from my neighbor and nice started jamming so you knew early on that this is what i want to do i knew years before that i that i wanted to do that i i i mean if I can answer the question you didn't ask when I was, I can tell you when the moment was. I was 11 years old, and I and I saw the song remains the same, Led Zeppelin's uh, concert movie. Well, way to jump ahead. Good job. Yeah. Because that that is the next question is your earliest musical influence, and that is a good one. I don't know and if it's I my earliest. It. I don't know if it's my earliest earliest, but when I the moment I decided that I was going to play one. the guitar and that was going to yeah. be a thing with me in life was. Watching the song remains the same. Watching Jimmy Page gesture to the crowd all mystically and yep. play it with his bow, you know. The, the, I'm I'm not I'm not uh, super unique in that, you know. Led Zeppelin I know inspired a lot no. of people, but yeah, take a number, you know. <laughs> right, but my right I think my my earliest earliest musical influence was had to be Michael Jackson. <laughs> you know it when when Beat It was out, that was my jam. I mean, yeah. No matter how cool you think you are, no matter how you know hardcore or whatever, you know you loved that whole album. Well, the whole thing. No, not gonna lie. Yeah, and that I, dude, I dare you to find anybody who's like, eh, I just didn't think it was that much. That dude, like anybody. That dude was bad, and that's yeah. no pun intended. He was no. bad. Uh, I just had a conversation actually at work with somebody who uh, is not a musician, but we were talking about how um, some albums you get like a hit or two, right? You know, that's, and that's, and, and the rest of it's kind of garbage. And back in the day, Filler. kids, back in the day, kids, <laughs> you used to be afraid to buy the whole album because <laughs> you're like, oh, but I've only heard the singles. Right. What, what if I don't like the rest of it? Yeah. Um, and then Tower Records came along with our listening stations. Oh, man. I, I remember. Uh, I remember still to this day, um, this, this, this dates me and, and how close to the end for Tower Records it was. I remember standing at the listening station. Listening to Metallica S and M, and just smiling and listening to the entire thing. <laughs> yeah. And and then I didn't buy it, but my uh, my girlfriend at the time worked for Tower Records and ended up uh, getting me the the uh, the whole concert on uh, CD. And I was just like, I think I still have it laying around somewhere. But nowadays, That's CDs. A good one. <laughs> Whether you're a Metallica fan or not, just they were the the first ones to really like put on like 
we're going to do an entire show with a symphony and metal and or maybe not maybe not the first ones but they're the ones that made it kind of a, a big thing in my book I liked, anyway, moving on I liked that they they made uh, that they wrote a couple of original songs for the SNM and play and yes and it's, they're not on any of the albums uh, that was that was cool to me that really drew me to that I I bought that one on day one right um and then they basically didn't communicate with the uh, the conductor for, for like three years or whatever until uh, uh, SM2 came out uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, the conductor, Michael Kamen, uh, passed away before SM, SNM2 could could uh, take place. Oh. Yeah. Who am I thinking of then? Yeah, they, had, they, they worked with somebody new. I can't remember what their name was for the second one, but uh, yeah, oh. Michael Kamen from the first one uh, passed away a few years later after the first one. Well, I, stand, I said corrected then. Uh, moving on. So we've talked about influence. We've talked about, you know, uh, uh, how long you've been doing music. And you said that uh, one ton pro- you've been doing music in the one ton project vein for about like over twenty years. Yeah, about whereas, twenty. Whereas your current incarnation is brand spanking new. Yeah. Um, I wondered if we could talk a little bit about show memories. Now, Juicebox Desmond doesn't have any show memories yet. Not yet. Right. But one ton project does. And what about the bejesus? Uh, no, the bejesus. We played probably one show in a backyard party. As the bejesus nice. back in the nineties. Well, okay, so then, just in your lexicon or in in your uh, his, history, what is that one favorite show memory that you like thinking about, whether it's good or bad, or somebody went to jail, or oh, yeah. that was my rock star moment, or whatever? Yeah. So there was uh, one time project played at the House of Blues, uh, Las Vegas, about four times, I think, uh, between two thousand ten and two thousand fifteen. Um, and it was probably the, it was, I want to say it was like the third one, um, and in around, maybe it was earlier than that, but it was one of the House of Blue shows. I, I can't pinpoint. It's definitely one of those. Um, we were able to organize the show with, and and pull together a band called the Trey Surfers, a a ska band, uh, Trey Surfers and, uh, and Goldfish Don't Bounce, GDB. And uh, GDB headlined the show, um, but it was really important to me that we get Trey Surfers on the show because Trey Surfers uh, is D. Kenny. He's the drummer for Trey Surfers. Ah. And so uh, this was after, you know, you, this was years after he, uh, he left One Ton Project, but he was in town. And so we were able to have a show with One Ton Project, GDB, and Trey Surfers with with uh, D. Kenny on the drums, and uh, that was just a cool thing, you know, because we, me and him, hadn't been able to play any any big shows like that um, since forming the band years before. So that right. was particularly special that show, and I and I remember us playing well uh, that night, and it was it was just generally fun, probably the best show we've ever had. Right on. One of my favorite show memories is playing House of Blues as well, um, uh, with the suspense back when that was a thing, and. Um... I checked off a few things off the old rock star checklist, yep. including including somebody at the front of the crowd. Some young kid is like, "Hey, can I have your guitar pick?" <laughs> and I was like, "Right on it." We opened the show, so I tossed it to him. Make come you feel to like find a rock out, star? he come to find out he did that on every freaking act. Aww, because <laughs> I was like, "Hey, yeah, this happened." And the second act guitarist is like, "Oh, you did that to me too." I was like, uh, "You know what? I'll 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 take it. I'll take it. it Give I'll me take my the compliment." Pick back. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, the best part is. Most of my picks were found on bar floors, so I don't even That's know funny. what pick it was. It was just whatever I happened to play with, but uh, I don't have like a lucky pick or a particular thickness or anything. I'm not that guy. Um, I do want to talk about that, though, because just looking at where you're sitting, I, I can see you're, you know, you're a bit of a gearhead. Proudly displaying some of my guitars, yeah. Well, I was talking about the rack next to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You get a different view than what uh, than what my final camera is going to have. It's got my guitars in awesome. the background. But you're looking at my amp setup. Yeah. Right on. Uh, I wanted I wanted to shift over to gears since you're not a drummer it won't take forever so <laughs> what uh, what are you currently well you're not rocking it at a show and I assume every song is a different setup basically but what is your go to gear uh, if you had to play a Juicebox Esma show right now what would you what would you bring are you gonna limit me to one guitar no all right well then you're I'd probably bring pump. two guitars uh, yeah. because I do some drop D stuff and some standard tuning <laughs> stuff. And you can always break a string. Um, right? I, that's that's also true. 
Um, <coughs> I I have a, a Paul Reed Smith DC-22, which is kind of like a, a a rare version of the Santana model. It's a 22, nice. 22 fret uh, with, uh, um, with a hard tail, with a rat tail. Uh, and so it's basically a, a, a Les Paul Jr. with a nice maple top on it. That's the, the yellow one you can see in the background here. Um, I would also bring my, my t- I have a, a pretty nice Telecaster that I would bring for my standard tuning stuff. Uh, it's, it's nothing too special, but it's kind of a cool special edition uh, model. Um, my amp setup is basically what I would bring to a show uh, here. And I'm not, it's, what can you see? You can see. I can see an orange light. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, you're seeing my mic preamp for because I'm recording the audio. Um, but nice. This guy here is my Marshall 9100 power amp, uh, and it's a dual mono mono block amplifier. Um, I just use one channel for recording. Um, I have a a Fectrode Blackbird preamp pedal. And this is my all my tone shaping. This is my secret weapon. I guess you it's fancy. not a secret no more. Yeah. yeah. Do you just wheel that cart to a show, basically? <laughs> if it had wheels, I could do that. But I'll, pro- ah, pro- buddy. I'll probably have to do a a um. I have to p- put it in the other rack, so so it'll so all it'll right. roll. Um, Back to the guitar shot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then I get and then I and I use for you know, I I record in my in my house in my bedroom. So it's tough to turn up a, a guitar amp. You know, I, I play some pretty loud styles of music. So, yes, you do. Um, you know, that's tough to record guitars that loud in this atmosphere without a studio or without a, a room that's treated for it. Uh, so I, I use um, a, a universal audio ox box for my to, so I can record my real amps, my real preamp and power amp sounds. But it emulates the room and the speaker and the microphone box cool. box now are you, a, a, are you how are you the level of gearhead where you I, I only use these strings or these picks not really but um my my buddy joe munoz from one sun project got me turned on to these dunlop these dunlop what are they called uh dunlop flow dunlop flow picks uh, i'm gonna give a Nice. Yeah, and they're kind of—I don't know if they're an acrylic plastic, but they're stiff, and and I I've started to play with them recently. Uh, I used to be stuck on Dava control picks. I mean, for like 15 Ooh, years, I didn't I didn't want to play with any of those. I I would try it. It's got a kind of a cool flex in the middle, so you know all you got to do is roll roll in to get a thick pick, or roll back off to get sort of a thin pick kind of vibe. Huh, so like a hybrid. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty oh, neat. That's cool. I'll, all right, I'll, I'll have to check them out. Um, all right, so as far as amp go, you're not wheeling the half stack or anything like that if you're going to a show. You're, you're running your rack through the, the system? Oh, well, if I, went to a, you know, if I went to a show, I'd bring a 2x12 cab. I okay. Have a, yeah, I have a 2x12 two by, two by that I would, I would mic for the, for the show. Now, I've also... I got the aux box, which is an attenuator, which gives me the option to run a signal straight to the front of the house, um, as well. So that's a it's an option, depending right on. on the system at the place. Cool. All right. Um, moving on from gear, we've talked about uh, influences. We've talked about you know how long you've been doing music. We've talked about gear. We've talked about um, what was the other thing? Gear. We talked about that. More gear. Yeah. <laughs> More gear. Wow. Um, How about singing? To... How about singing? Yeah. Do you sing, Josh? Yeah. Yes. But what I what I wanted to talk about was actually um, musical education. It, have you had any pro- any this actual like, lessons or? Pardon me? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've 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 had very little music music education. I t- I talked about uh, Mrs. Norton and Mr. Schulteis when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Um, but I remember almost none of the, you know, the technical stuff. I just remember being interested in it. Um, later on when I was, uh, b- uh, between 18 and 20 years old, I, I took private lessons, uh, from, uh, a, t- a teacher named Gary Queen, 
who used to run, uh, he used to play the guitar in Cirque du Soleil and a couple of other big shows. Nice. Yeah, and I, I took lessons for him for a couple of semesters, uh, which right were, were pretty, uh, pretty valuable and informative for me. Uh, but that's it. Right I haven't had any other musical education. My musical education is listening to music and learning and learning songs that I love. And honestly, sometimes that's the best. Yeah. Uh, the, the, edu- the I mean, it is nice to have the, the foundation of the basics, but music is one of those things that you can just teach yourself and develop your own unique style. And many um, people have. Yeah. yeah. I mean, same with cooking. People, you know, a lot of, there are a lot of famous chefs who never actually went to culinary school. Right. They just, you know, they, either they grew up in it or they, they tried a bunch of stuff and they, they, they you know, uh, had, they had uh, forgiving guinea pigs. Right. Um, and what, I remember the other thing we talked about, which was favorite show of memory. Uh, so, yeah. oh, from gear, I want to talk about, is there any dream gear you're lusting after? Any Wayne's World moment, like, <laughs> someday you'll be mine? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I suppose I would love to have, I, you know, being a fan of, of PRS guitars, I, I would love to have uh, one of the mid-80s... Um, Custom twenty fours from Paul Reed Smith, you know one of the right on. one of the vintage ones. I, uh, I think I, uh, you know anybody would love to have a real burst, a real fifty nine Les Paul. Sure, uh, that's that's probably those are probably the top of my list. Cool. I'd love a I, private I, stock. That's a little probably more attainable than either one of the ones I just said is a, a Paul Reed Smith private stock guitar where they they make it super fancy for you. You know what I'm saying? I would nice. love one of those. Right on. For me, I I would love a um, actual uh, rehear- like recording r- space <laughs> that isn't in my house. Uh. I would like an actual proper YouTube space that I can just set up and leave alone and not have to keep changing things around my family and not have to, you know, I'd like a crew. That's <laughs> what I really... You know the what? best answer I ever got from a band, uh, I forget what band and I forget what they played in the band. But they said a roadie. I was like, yes, that is the dream gear. <laughs> you know what? Forget, forget what I said. I would also like a studio. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a roadie and a record. really good manager. <laughs> yeah, all of that would be great. I, yeah, I, right. I think what you really want is a little bit of money. Because then you could pay those people and, right. and rent a studio space or buy one. Which is a perfect opportunity for me to talk to you about... Um, if you like the content that you know I'm putting out on Room Six, I've got a link down in the description for uh, basically all my social media links, including Patreon page. Uh, patrons are uh, aside from seeing you know all the the cool videos that we put out, they also are getting some con- uh, patron only content in the form of an hour long, unscripted, unedited, uh, hour long ish podcast with myself and Sean Flume, who has been in many of my videos as my whiskey drinking buddy. He's also my former drummer. Um, but aside from the Patreon page, another way to support is go to room6.shop and buy some merch. I've, I've got tons of merch for all sorts of seasons and, and all sorts of gift-giving ideas. Um, plus, I've got my own two CDs, which we talked about. Uh, there's just there's tons of ways, and any money that make, that comes in goes right back into either making better videos or, more than likely, uh, I'm, I'm trying to put together showcases for the Room 6 alumni, such as Juicebox, where you know five at a time, I'm just going to say, hey... I'm putting on a showcase, come play, I'll pay you, and you can put out your merch and, and you know, play to people that you wouldn't normally play to at a show. So uh, that's that's the ultimate goal of the Patreon page and, and any income that's coming in. Uh, back to the interview. Hi. Room6.shop. Buy, buy the merch. Thank you to everyone that is a patron and that has purchased the merch. Perch the merch. Uh, I, I really do appreciate you all, and uh, you're making this happen. I also appreciate my guests, so back to you. <laughs> so, from Dream Gear, the highs of Dream Gear, I want to talk about the lows of losing gear. You ever lose a piece of gear? More than I'd like to admit. Yeah, there's, yeah. I've got a list of the one that got away. It's a long list of the one that got away. No, I mean literally, like you left it at a gig or, you know. No, I, I, I haven't, I, uh, back in my, what, what, how I lost gear was that I would, I would have to pawn it. Uh, huh. you know, times are tough sometimes and you gotta pay, <laughs> you gotta pay the damn that's, power bill or, yeah, you know, that's, that's funnier for the two of us than it is for the audience. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because of, of our pawn shop ties. Right. 
Yes. Uh, but yes. yeah, that's how I've lost gear in the past. And so, you know, yep, that that's how some of this gear is from that same exact situation. <laughs> I've also Only... acquired gear from people losing it. So that's yes. Yeah. We've got a good contact in Daniel. Yes. Well, unfortunately, not anymore. Well, he's he moved and, and you moved. You're not in Nevada anymore, are you? I'm in Albuquerque now. Albuquerque. I still call my myself a, a, a Las Vegas, like I'm from Las Vegas. That's a, that's me. Right on. My brother actually went to college in Squirrel. Awesome. Love it. You know, and uh, so I've, I've been, been there a few times. Travis, is, uh, Travis and his family are from New Mexico as well. So you nice. Know, got some, and and um, uh, actually, uh, Travis's sister, who did the art for our, uh, for our couple of our records, um, she, she is practically my neighbor here in, La, in Albuquerque, so. Kind of awesome. Kind of cool. Right on. Well, we are on the last question. You made it. Yay. So the last question. <laughs> by so fast. Yeah, well, it's one person. When it's a band, it takes a bit. There's rabbit holes. So There's, yeah. a, there's but, a lot of reasons this is easier. Yes. But we're going to finish this up by talking to young you. What I want you to do is picture 16-year-old you thinking, I want to do that. What is one thing? that you wish you could tell yourself about the music industry. And don't say change your strings. <laughs> uh, so if I was talking to 16-year-old juice box. Yeah, or, or however old, younger you were when you got the bug to, like, I, I want to make music. Yeah, well, we could say 16. That's when I got my guitar, and I really started getting the ball rolling there. Um, okay. So first of all, I'd be like, by the way, you're going to be called juice box. Uh, <laughs> second, <laughs> second, you'll never make it. Get a job. <laughs> it's never going to happen. Uh, third, just keep making music. That's, that's it, man. Do it for the love. And, I'm, and in fact, I'm, I could tell my younger self that. I'll tell anybody else out there that's listening. If you've got some other reason for doing it other than that you love doing it, then stop doing it. That's what right. I think. Um, if, you know, that that is the that is the one reason that I... I continue to do it. I have a family. Um, I have a job, a demanding job, uh, but I also have, you know, two bands and a solo project that I, I make sure that I, you know, that I, I, I have as my creative output. And, uh, and I do it because it continues to bring me joy and make me happy. So don't do it for any other reason. I couldn't have said it any better. That is perfect. Perfect words of advice to younger you and or if, any new musician. And if I can, if I can just add, I think, Please. I think, and I hope that you can hear that, that anybody who listens to my music from any of my projects, the Bejesus, Once on Project, Juicebox Desmond, I hope that you can hear the joy that I have in my music. Right. And honestly, I can. And I, I personally, I always find it even more awesome when I, I hear an amazing musician I, I go to a show and I see a band and I know they all have day jobs, they all have families and they're still putting the effort in to making this show, they're not that phoning it in yep. um, that being said, I also have mad respect for bands like um, Roxy Gun Project, Crips and Riot uh, which are the same band, basically they make a living just from music that's crazy and, 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 and whatever else they're doing but it's like, so I have mad respect either way um, as long as you're New musicians, as long as you're doing something towards whatever it is that you really are passionate about when you're not being paid to be passionate about it, you're winning. You're successful. Like Agreed. This this YouTube thing is not me saying, oh boy, someday I'm going to make that money. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me. Um, Got a million dollar and, idea. I don't see why not. It, yeah. And anybody that's on uh, TikTok or, or YouTube or uh, Facebook may be familiar with the fact that Hank Green just dropped a YouTube video basically saying, TikTok's broken when it comes to paying creators. And they are. I'm on TikTok. Um, I'm nowhere near getting paid yet on there, and, and I may never. But I'm not doing it for that. Right. I'm doing it to, one, draw attention to my YouTube channel, where I do hope to be paid one day, but also because things like TikTok, things like Facebook, they allow me to get my yayas out in a different way than I can on a YouTube video. So... We all got to get our yayas out. Exactly. Mick was right. So, <laughs> um, with that, thank you very much for watching and for being part of Room 6. Thank you for being on the channel. 
And stick around, we're going to have the video for Chaos Carousel, which is from the Bejesus, which is Juicebox and D. Kenny. It's an awesome video, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Um, in the meantime, remember to be amazing. We'll see you next time on Room 6. Say bye. Bye. Bye, all. Thanks for watching. ba da ba ba da ba Hey! Everyone has to do something. <laughs>